Welcome to the Gorgeous Glow Skin Show. I'm your host, Dr. Sonya Johnson. I'm a board certified dermatologist and creator of the Gorgeous RX system. I help women who want to have even and clear skin tone with increased confidence. If that's you, you're at the right place. Well, today we're going to talk about alopecia areata, and the topic came about when one of my dear friends, Dr. Lindy, uh, approached me, uh, Facebooked me in, called me and said, hey, you got to give a talk on this uh, to our, you know, your group about alopecia areata. You know, as you know, our representative, um, Ayana Presley, you know, came forth and stated that she's been dealing with this problem and... And, you know, I'm sure you've seen a lot on the internet, so I'm just going to give you, you know, information on basically what it is and who it affects, as well as how we're going to treat it. But we're going to talk about that uh, another time. So alopecia areata is, as you have heard, an autoimmune disease in which your body decides to attack itself. So the question is, what caused it to attack itself? Is it that um, you've had an infection and internally... Uh, some parts of that infection broke off and attack, uh, attached itself to your internal organs and therefore your body still thinks there's an infection there and go after it and therefore attack that particular organ or what? We really don't know. However, alopecia areata is a very type of specific uh, autoimmune process. There are other specific autoimmune process such as vitiligo in which your body attacks the uh, skin cells, your, your pigment cells. There's also um, Graves' disease in which your body attacks the thyroid glands. So alopecia areata is when your body decides to attack the hair follicles. And if you look under the microscope, what you see is a swarm of bees. That was what I call it, but it's nothing but inflammatory cells or your cells that fight off infections that surround itself around the hair bulbs. And what it does, it beats up on hair bulbs and causes your body to release the hair. And if you put a protection around that hair bulb, Sure enough, the cells go away and your body grows hair. So alopecia areata does not mean you're permanently, well, you can be permanently bald, but if we get rid of those inflammatory cells, your hair has the ability, your body has the ability to grow hair. So now let's go more in detail with that. So with alopecia areata, you ask yourself, what all areas does it affect and who does it affect? Well, I've seen it as young as eight-year-olds. Uh, average age is 12 and of course adults can get it and you can wake up one day and you have a round spot of hair loss and when I mean round spot I mean totally smooth perfectly round spot of hair loss when patients come into my office I pull on the edges to see is it still active and if I can still pull more than five hairs out it's still active meaning it's just going to get bigger it's just a matter of time so at that point my goal is to try to stop the process However, like I stated, as far as the people it does affect, little kids, when I find that little kids, you know, come in with small areas of hair loss, of course, we work fast to try to get the hair to grow back. However, you know, to me, in my practice, more than adults, when kids develop totalis, which in your body has lost all the hairs on the scalp, they tend to not rebound that well. They, they can't grow hair back, but then it comes out again, and they tend to uh, be left with that... Um, that outcome. Whereas adults, I rarely see adults with totalis, which is a whole entire head of hair loss. Um, very few. And yes, when they have it, yes, you can get some hairs to grow back, but will it all grow back? No. It's just that I see more kids with this than adults. A lot of times people come in with small areas of hair loss. It can be one, it can be two, it can be more than that. And then you ask yourself, what's causing it? Is it that um, something I've done? A lot of people come in thinking uh, or have already correlated it with, oh, I use this new product on my scalp. Oh, this is what happened. I had this injection or somebody hit me or whatever. Usually it has nothing to do with anything. It's autoimmune. It just happened. Now, a lot of people think it is due to stress and you question that only because we really don't know to what degree stress actually affects us. We do know that stress is very much alive and well and we need to acknowledge that. But if you are stressed and all of a sudden you develop hair loss, you want to take care of the stress so it won't get worse if that's the case. Now, with alopecia areata, there's various types. There is the, uh, like I said, small areas here and there of hair loss. There is when you have the, uh, and of course, it can affect any parts of the body. It can affect the beard area. It can affect the eyebrows, eyelashes, other body hairs, private area. When you have entire scalp 
hair gone, you're looking at um, totalis. And when you have total body hairs gone, scalp, eyebrows, eyelashes, body hairs, you look, you, we call that uh, alopecia universalis, okay, which is universal. Now, there's another condition that people don't really talk about that much is when you have the hair loss in a band around the hair. So it's almost like you had this, uh, you know how we had, used to have those exercise bands that people wore around their heads? Well, the lower aspect of the hair up until a certain width, you have all this area, a band around the hair that's gone. And we call it ophiasis. Not common, but it can happen. And that is a part of alopecia areata also. So the question is then, who else is affected? Um, there is no predilection for, um, uh, uh, as far as uh, ethnicities, except I came across one study that talked about African-American nurses and um, Hispanic nurses, nurses are more affected than non-Hispanic nurses. Large study, that's the first time I've seen that. But uh, other than that, uh, is this hereditary? Well, it's not what we call a true hereditary, but there is a, a, some correlation that if you have family mem members who's, who've been diagnosed with alopecia areata, about 10 to 20% chance that you would get it also. So it doesn't have to be just your mom. It could be um, your um, distant relative. The problem is a lot of people don't talk about hair loss. Or in my case, I have a lot of people walking in saying they have alopecia. I have hair loss. Well, the thing is, there's so many different types of alopecia. Alopecia areata is very specific, very type of hair loss. It is not alopecia, which is generalized hair loss, which could be non-inflammatory. Inflammatory could be scarring. So we have various names. Um, and so to say the word alopecia just means hair loss. It doesn't tell me exactly which type. And so therefore the percentage of that 10 to 20% of being your chances of getting alopecia areata because someone is else in your family has it, it could be higher. We really don't know because everybody throws around alopecia so it's so, so broad that we don't know for sure is there more cases of alopecia areata out there. And another thing is too, people are ashamed when they lose hair. You know, some people do go get services. I know in my case, I see so many women that come in and it's too late and they don't even have alopecia areata. They have a scarring alopecia. But by the time they come in to see me, there's really nothing I can do for them. And there's nothing nobody can do for them. Um, and so the problem with hair loss is we tend, as a society, still feel embarrassed and ashamed of it. We don't want to come forth with it. So I really got to commend um, Representative um, uh, Ayanna Presley about it because to go very much public with that information, you know, is, is rare that you see that. And you hear it every now and then when, especially when women have cancers, a lot of times people don't talk about when they have hair loss. So... Uh, other things that you want to know about this medication is uh, what else can affect it? What can cause the hair loss? Well, you know, there's not too many things that we know that can truly cause it. It just happens. Um, but I do know that if you, another thing you need to consider is what all um, is associated with this hair loss. You know, when I have hair loss, will I have any symptoms with it? Well, some people do. Some people get itching or a burning sensation before the hair comes out. Majority do not. And some people, their nails are affected. So uh, the nails can turn red, um, that you can get pits in the nails, or you can have ridging in the nails. And those are uh, symptoms, or I'm sorry, signs that you can see, besides of areas of no hair, um, that you can see that is associated with alopecia areata are the nails. So any questions for me? Well, thank you uh, for watching, Dr. Janine. Wonderful to see you. Uh, anyone have any questions? Well, tomorrow I'm going to talk about how do we treat it. There's so many options out there, um, but definitely how do we treat this alopecia areata? Thank you for watching me today. I'm your host, Dr. Sonia Johnson. I'm a board-certified board dermatologist and creator of the Gorgeous RX system. I have women who want to have even and clear skin tone with increased confidence. If that's you, you're at the right place. Again, join our Facebook group, uh, GorgeousGalCrew.com. Again, GorgeousGalCrew.com. And we can give you some more information and uh, some freebies and tips on how to take care of your wonderful, gorgeous skin. Take care. Bye-bye.